Uh, my name is Professor Thomas Kailath, and we are sitting in the backyard of my home at one edge of the Stanford campus. Professor Kailath, what does it mean for you to get this award? You know, this is perhaps the most challenging of the questions that uh, I will be asked today. So I should take some time and give a careful reply. Of course, it means uh, a great deal to me in many ways. I am uh, both very happy, of course, and also very humbled. Uh, as I thought more about it uh, over the last few days, the citation uh, of the award really resonated with me, and I copied it down. It says the award is for creating knowledge with transformative impact on the information and communication technologies that permeate everyday life. The reason is, you know, that when one does one's work, one doesn't have such big global uh, thoughts in mind. You take the problem that's in front of you or that you chose, and you try to do the, your best to solve it. You're not thinking so much of uh, the broader implications of it. You, you want to solve the problem. So this, did, but uh, when you step back, that's actually, uh, and I look back over some phases of my career, that's actually uh, this, uh, this description of the BBVA awards uh, really is a very good description of what I have done uh, in a bigger, uh, when one thinks about it in a bigger way. Okay. Now, uh, I am also, of course, very humbled. You know, uh, this field, information communication technologies, is a very wi a wide one. And, uh, you know, uh, as with many general awards of this type, there, are, there, will be a, there must have been a number of very qualified candidates, and, uh, but only one can be chosen, and there may be others who were not nominated. So there is a lot of uh, luck involved uh, because there would be people uh, equally, if not more qualified, but uh, the luck comes in because uh, I had a nominator who decided to nominate me. He found some very good references who, at somewhat short notice, I'm told, uh, wrote strong letters. And uh, <laughs> I must, uh, I suppose, compliment the jury on, uh, on their uh, decision-making processes because, of course, I'm the beneficiary of their uh, wisdom. Yeah. Now, uh, I should say that, uh, I mean, among other things, it's a very big award. The biggest award for an engineer can get in the U.S. is the Draper Prize of the National Academy of Engineering, a very competitive award, uh, which is half a million dollars. And the BBVA award is uh, even bigger than that. So uh, that, that is another uh, thing that, of course, certainly makes me uh, very pleased and people that hear about it as well. Now, uh, I mean, there are many acknowledgments I should make. It's not my work alone, I should say. Though initially I uh, you know, started a different pattern of work where my work was different from those of my students uh, for the first decade or 15, 15 years, then I began to work more closely with my students and, as I've said before, exploit the fact that uh, they can be intelligence amplifiers. We can have an interaction, I may suggest something, and they go back, work on it, and come back with improvements, and we go back and forth that way. Or they suggest something to me, and I think about it, and I point out something that may be useful for going forward. So working with students uh, has been a big uh, joy for me, and I've had the great pleasure to attract uh, a large number of very talented students from around the world. And uh, they have been, they're a very big part of the success, especially in the later years when we took bigger problems than can be worked on by one professor or one student. We needed teams of students. So, as I said again, I must acknowledge them and the postdocs who played a very important role in helping me with this research as well. And of course, needless to say, always, uh, I don't know about always. But the family support is very important because they tend to be neglected when one is focusing on one's research. 
So I'm happy to acknowledge that and uh, I've had a tragedy there where my wife of many years passed away but uh, she would have been delighted to see this award and maybe she in some way is still having a role in it. So, thank you. Your research has gone from the mathematical roots of each topic to the final application. How have you been able to do that? You know, actually, uh, it's the other way. One doesn't start, at least in engineering or mathematical engineering, as I like to call it. One doesn't start with mathematics and then uh, find a problem. One starts with a problem uh, for which one tries to make a, a simple model that is mathematically tractable. And then one looks to see what mathematics can be useful to solve that problem. Sometimes it's at hand. Sometimes one has to, and one knows about it, sometimes one has to search uh, for it, and sometimes one has to try to develop a relevant mathematics. And all those things have happened to me, and that's why I've published both in engineering and mathematical journals. So uh, how have I been able to do that? Well, I suppose I was always interested in mathematics. I like mathematics, but not for its own sake. I like it when it helped me to solve a problem and that has been the driving force. And uh, luck, I mean, uh, if I have more time I can talk more about the ac lucky accidents on travels which led me to new mathematics and uh, a, a book in Russian which I found in a Russian bookstore and so on which turned out to be very relevant. So in brief, one doesn't start with the mathematics, one starts with the problem. You have experienced the evolution of the IT industry, of computers from the inside. Did you expect computers to become so ubiquitous and essential in our everyday life as they currently are? Yeah. No, the question is, I have, of course, uh, been privileged to witness the evolution of the computer industry over the years. And did I expect them to be so ubiquitous as they are uh, in present day life? No, absolutely not. And I must say, I started in 1957 when my professors at MIT uh, said, oh, one, there's a new IBM 704 computer that we've uh, obtained at MIT, and all of us, all of you must learn to program it. So that was sort of the first task we were given. Well, then we watched the evolution of transistor coming in. Lincoln Lab built some experimental transistor models. DEC came with its mini computers. 1968 Intel introduced the microprocessor and from there we have gone by leaps and bounds and now we have practically in handheld devices uh, as much much more computing power than we had in 1957 with racks of equipment. So that evolution has been remarkable and actually it shows no signs of stopping the capabilities of cell phones, iPhones, iPads will keep expanding and uh, their spread into the world will also keep expanding. I mean, the advent of cell phones has made a remarkable transformation all around the world. Villages in India, South America, Africa, people now have incredible access to knowledge and communication ability thanks to these developments. How did it feel when you found the way to make chips smaller with optical light? Oh, uh, how did, when, did, when I managed to find a way to make uh, chips smaller than the wavelength of the incident light, of course, uh, and let me tell you, I was always confident that when we tackled this problem, the way we were going to approach it would solve the problem. However, the less, you know, it is uh, not an easy path to the solution. And uh, at one point, we had a solution which was quite complicated though our friends uh, in the semiconductor business encouraged us to try and build a system like that. But uh, my team was reluctant. They said it would take too long, too complicated still. And then one day one of the postdocs had a eureka moment and came up with a breakthrough idea which simplified greatly uh, our mathematical solution and made it practical. And this is how things happen all over the world. So. We, the first company that helped us break the 100 nanometer barrier at that time was Motorola 
And so we were thrilled, as was Motorola and the industry, when we broke the barrier and made chips with 90 nanometer feature size. But then, you know, as often happens, once someone does it for the first time, then people can follow and make improvements and so on. And now we are at 32 nanometers. Intel is producing chips. I mean, it went down to 90, 65, 42, 32, may go to 22. And the mathematics, in fact, has no limit, but there will be other limits. So it, it was a very happy feeling to be the first to do something, at least to help to do something. Uh, many things are required in the process. How will the computers of the future be, say, like 25 years from now? <laughs> you know, I don't think I am in a position to say. Uh, I mean, the, the progress of computer development has been much faster than anyone would have predicted so far. So looking out 25 years is too far. But what I can say is that, you know, we will. They will, of course, be much better. and. Uh, there will be improvements on both sides. The technology used to make them, maybe nanotubes, maybe biological computers, maybe quantum computers, but also the mathematical side of engineering will help because the algorithms that we develop or will need to develop uh, to reduce, will help to reduce power, to increase speed, to uh, reduce the size of the chips, so there'll be both physical developments, chemical, biological, I mean, who, it's hard to predict, and, uh, but mathematical developments as well. So it's a great time to be working in these areas. There were, I mean, there were, uh, during the press conference, people asked questions about, uh, you know, security of computers and hacking. And that I must say, yes, you know, another area that goes along with the last question is, uh, the question of security of the computer networks. We have become so dependent on the computers and worldwide uh, transmission of information that, uh, you know, it can be a tool of warfare and terrorism to break into these networks as we know already. So along with uh, the progress in computers come certain dangers which may have a significant impact on our life. So. Uh, as someone had asked me in the press conference uh, a week ago, uh, this is an area that needs a lot of work. And fortunately, work is going on, of course, in that area, and mathematical type of work also, especially, I must say.